Hi everyone, I am really glad that we're connecting okay here live. We had all kinds of tech problems last week, but I tested everything yesterday, so I am so glad that this is working. So welcome to our Monday live stream. It's great to see you guys on and wonderful conversation going on in the chat ahead of time. Thank you so much for taking time out of your Monday to be with me here today. It's really nice to have this time set aside every week and to see so many of our friends um, join us week after week. If you're new here, I wanna welcome you to our channel, to our Monday live streams, and I want you invite you to join us every week at Monday noon Pacific time. So if you're here for the first time, please say hello in the chat, don't be shy. You'll find that the community here is just super friendly, super helpful. People are really um, wanting to know how you are, how your garden is, and even chatting it up about any personal things that might go on that you feel comfortable to share, surgeries, um, all kinds of things, sons, daughters, graduations, weddings, um, if you're safe in hurricanes and windstorms. So it's really a great garden community. Thank you so much. So it looks like camera guys here in the chat. I'm so glad he's able to join us on his lunch and everything Sunflowers and More is moderating. Her name is Christy. She's a fantastic moderator, keeps us on track, pops links um, here and there and really does a great job. So I really appreciate her showing up and camera guy who's my husband and filming our videos, um, watching from work um, on his lunch break. So guys, the topic on the table today is growing three crops that are very easy to grow indoors on your windowsill um, during the cold weather. So I wanna encourage you guys to start thinking about a month or so ahead in your garden. So think about what the weather's gonna be in about a month and start planning because you don't wanna be without some kind of fresh veggies to harvest even if, even if it's just snipping a few here and there. Um, once your, your warm weather crops start to die out, if you live in an area that gets cold in the winter, you're definitely gonna wanna have something growing. If you live in a warm winter climate, like I do in California, you're lucky you can probably grow something all year long, but it's still really fun to have something on your windowsill, very, very convenient. So we, before we jump into the three crops, I wanna just say hello, see who's here, um, greet everybody. Uh, we have Shirley here from Florida, Travis is here. Irene, she's watching from Las Vegas today. Um, Debbie, hi. Debbie is from Lanai in uh, Hawaii. So Debbie, I'm so glad that you're joining us today. It's great to have you here. Nisha is from Northern California. Um, Tony in Sacramento. Laura, hi, how are you? I think Laura's from Long Island, New York. Um, Trina here from North Carolina, 3 p.m., three hours difference. Sandra from Chicago, Stephen from Canada, Zenith from South Africa, my goodness. And I know I saw, I'm sorry, I can't remember, someone here from Aruba and saying that um, they wanted camera guy and I to come visit. So that would be so much fun. I would love to go to Aruba. California Garden TV from uh, here in Southern California. Royal Health Living from North Carolina. New Garden, Gardening by Nicole from in Florida. So people watching here from all over the world coming together to talk about growing your own vegetables. So here on our live stream, we like to keep things quick, simple, inexpensive and fun here on our channel that is. And the live streams are all about building community, having garden support, providing some resources, tips, tricks, ideas, and answering questions. So let's jump in to one of my favorite crops to grow indoors on the windowsill during the winter time, during the cold months that is. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have winter. We don't really have winter here, but, um, and that is basil. Now, hopefully you guys were able to catch my video last week on rooting basil. Basil is one of the easiest things you can grow inside. Um, this was rooted from a cutting I took from an outside plant. So if you've got basil growing in your garden right now, um, go back and watch the video I posted, I believe it was last Friday, on how to root basil cuttings simply in water. Then you can plant it on a container, put it right on your kitchen windowsill, or if you still have warm weather, you can definitely plant it out in your garden. But this grows really well on my windowsill. I don't have a kitchen windowsill that is super, super sunny. So it does not get a lot of direct light. It just gets indirect sunlight in the morning. Um, or actually it gets indirect sunlight all day, but it doesn't really get a lot of direct light and it grows beautifully. So it's just so convenient to have um, in the winter time, uh, you know, when it's cold outside, but just at your fingertips, right on your kitchen windowsill, you can just snip off the top 
and that's gonna encourage it to keep on growing. And then you can pop some little basil leaves in your morning omelet. You can throw some in a salad. You can flavor your water with it or your favorite cocktail with it. Um, and it's just a wonderful plant to grow. So take advantage of the fact that you might have some in your garden right now. And so before it dies off, because it's getting too cold, make sure that you go back and watch that rooting basil video and get some going. And trust me, you are gonna thank me um, come November, December when it's too cold to grow basil outside. I mean, even here in California, once the temperature gets down in the 40s or even the 30s at night, Basil is so cold sensitive, so it does die off in the cold weather. Doesn't necessarily even have to have a frost. Um, and I'm always glad that I take plenty of cuttings and grow some indoors. Now, the other thing is, you guys might not know this, but if you live near a Trader Joe's, maybe you don't have basil growing in your garden right now. If you live near a Trader Joe's, they sell these beautiful, large size basil plants for about three to four dollars. So it's probably gonna be pretty hard to find a little basil transplant in your garden center right now. Um, but Trader Joe's has them not all year round, but most of the year round, and hopefully they'll have them in your location. So you can grab yourself a basil plant for three or four dollars. You can plant it out in your garden, or you can pot it up and place it inside or put it in a container right outside your kitchen, and then take a couple cuttings. That's all it is. Just take a couple cuttings, root them in water. Um, you can keep them alive actually in water for, for quite some time. You can drop a couple drops of some kind of fertilizer. I use the Vermistera worm tea or the Good Dirt uh, liquid fertilizer and it really does the job and helps it growing, keep growing. So if you have um, a kitchen windowsill or a sunny windowsill or a not so sunny windowsill, the first crop you are gonna wanna grow is basil. And I did see a question um, rolling by here. What is basil used for? Well, um, basil is actually one of the most popular herbs um, and you can pretty much use it for anything. It's typically an Italian type seasoning. It's really good in spaghetti sauces. Um, it's great on fresh pizza or fresh basil is good on pizza. I like to put it in water just to flavor my water. Um, we would use it on all kinds of stuff. Chop it up, put it in omelets. You can use it on sandwiches. It's really a multi-purpose herb and it smells absolutely wonderful. So if you've never grown basil, there's lots of different varieties. This is just your normal um, Genovese basil. You can also grow it from seed. I have an herb seed collection over on my website, calikimgardeninhome.com. That has two varieties of basil in it. If you wanna grow it from seed, maybe you don't have basil plants available to you. And you can grab that today. I'm actually running a sale. Today's the very last day to get 15% off with the code SEPTEMBER over on my website. So head on over there, grab yourself an herb seed collection. But whatever you do, get some basil growing on your windowsill in the wintertime. So I know, I know a lot of you like to do that. Um, let me see here in the chat. Let me know if you're growing basil indoors, what you like to use basil for. I see Irene likes to use it in pesto. Yeah, that is one of the greatest ways to use when you have tons and tons of basil in your garden is to make yourself up a big batch of pesto in the blender. You can just throw it in there with some olive oil, some garlic, salt and pepper. If you wanna put some pine nuts or almonds in there, um, blend it all up and then you can actually freeze it in ice cube trays. You can use it fresh or you can freeze it and pull it out later um, during the winter time. And believe me, there's nothing like garden fresh pesto. If you spread it over a really nice thin pizza crust and top it with some pizza toppings, oh my goodness, it is so, so good. Um, Kirian says, I've got basil, but when do I cut the tops off? Okay, what you're gonna wanna do, Kirian, is go back and watch the video I posted last week on how to um, get your basil rooted in water. And I show you exactly how to cut off your tops um, you wanna cut them before they flower, before they go to seed. And then I showed you exactly what to do um, to get your basil rooted. It's so, so easy. And you're definitely gonna to wanna to do that before your basil plant um, dies off. So Luz is saying that she likes a slice of basil, slice of cheese, slice of mozzarella. Wow, I'm getting hungry. Sprinkle with salt and that makes a, for a great salad. That's a great idea, Luz. You could roll that up and just have it for lunch, um, a little snack, whatever you might wanna have um it is just a super super tasty tasty herb 
Okay, fresh pesto, basil watermelon smoothie. Wow, Rita, I love that. That sounds super, super delicious. I'm gonna have to try that. Okay, and camera guy is saying it's a crystal clear picture we're getting today. That's wonderful. It's a little bit of an overcast day, which makes for much better um, pictures, much better filming. So I'm glad that it's coming through loud and clear. And we have Tolls watching from Greece. That's so exciting. Um, at 10 p.m. here in Greece. So thank you so much for staying up with us and joining us here today on the live stream. Okay, Piano Master, hello from Hawaii. Oh my goodness. Piano Master's in Hawaii. We just came back from Hawaii and uh, Piano Master went for their sister's wedding. Yes, Hawaii is absolutely gorgeous. Have a wonderful time. I bet the weather is beautiful there. Um, Amy loves uh, basil lemon water uh, the last couple of days. And Amy, I totally agree with you. There's nothing more refreshing than drinking a nice big glass of basil um, water. Put cucumbers in it, lemons, limes, whatever you like. Um, it's absolutely delicious and so refreshing. It makes drinking water so much less boring, don't you think? So I'm glad that you're enjoying that too. Okay, guys, let's talk about, oh, and I also want to hear from you what you enjoy growing on your windowsill as well, okay? So I'm going to talk about the second thing that I like to grow in the wintertime right on my windowsill, and I want you guys to get ready and pop in the chat. I'm going to be looking in the chat in just a second, and I want to hear from you what you like growing as well. Okay, so the second thing that is so easy to grow, guys, on your windowsill in the wintertime is lettuce. So I absolutely love fresh salads. Um, I have my little Cali Kim five gallon smart pots here growing full of lettuce. And guys, I am really surprised that this is doing so well. We've had super hot weather the past couple weeks. And um, this is the Paris Cause Romaine lettuce, very heat tolerant. I've actually had it growing completely in the shade. It might get a little bit of morning sun, but it's been growing in the shade. And this is in my lettuce seed collection and it's been growing for maybe about three weeks and look at the growth on this. So we'll probably be harvesting this very soon, but lettuce is my number two crop to grow on a windowsill in the winter time. And let me show you how I like to do it. I actually just planted some here this morning so I could show you guys. You can pick up any kind of little container or use any kind of container you have around your house. You don't have to get fancy. You don't have to spend a lot of money. These are some of my favorites. I picked these up at the dollar store. I'm sure a lot of you guys have dollar stores around you a couple of years back and I use them over and over again. They're perfect for windowsill growing because they're nice and narrow and they fit perfectly on my kitchen windowsill and the price is right. But if you don't have a dollar store, just find something you have around your house. So what I do is I fill this with a uh, indoor potting mix. I use the Good Dirt indoor potting mix and I just simply sprinkled lettuce seeds right on top. You can see the seeds. Now lettuce seeds, um, one reason why they're so easy to grow, they need light to germinate so you don't have to cover them with soil. All you do is sprinkle them on top and then just kind of push the seeds down into the soil and you can just pop them right on your windowsill. Now, if you have a couple hours of light, um, they're gonna grow that much faster, but these go on my kitchen windowsill. As I mentioned, not a lot of direct light, and they will pop up and be ready to harvest in about three weeks. So I'm definitely gonna come back and show you guys how these are doing. You wanna make sure that you follow me on Instagram. I'll be posting some photos of these as they germinate, as they sprout. But again, it's so much fun to have them right at your fingertips. Right there, you can just snip a salad. I mean, it's just so much fun and so rewarding. So think ahead. If you're in hot weather right now, don't let that stop you from growing lettuce. Grow it on your windowsill or pop it outside um, like I did here and grow it in a container and keep it covered and shaded and it's gonna grow just fine. So if you are in hot weather, you are gonna make sure, you, you do wanna make sure that you choose some heat tolerant varieties. Um, the romaine, I actually planted uh, in here, the prize head and the red romaine, which are both heat tolerant. These are all in my lettuce seed collection. And the romaine lettuces are typically more heat tolerant so that works really well. And one reason why these are also growing well is because this container here, I also have these on my website, is a fabric container. It's breathable, so it allows for more airflow. So try it in some fabric containers and it just keeps your plants a lot cooler in the heat. And these are also super, super durable containers as well and last for several years. So give it a go, guys. I wanna hear all about how you guys like to grow lettuce. Now you can grow it under grow lights too if you want. 
um, like you could pop it in the container now and then bring it indoors and put it under grow lights once the weather gets really cold. But lettuce is also very frost tolerant. So if you're getting light frost, it will also do well um, in the light, um, in the seasons of light frost, like when your winter time first gets going. So let's go back to the chat guys and see what's going on. I wanna hear what you're growing in your windowsill and if you've grown any lettuce um, lately or grown it in the past in the winter time on your windowsill also. Okay, let's see here. Um, I keep losing my lettuce to rabbits. Oh my goodness, that's so frustrating. What you might wanna do, this is from She's Gone Country Farms, is try some chicken wire over your garden beds or over your containers and that will, the rabbits don't like to climb on that chicken wire and that'll really help while the lettuce is germinating. Now, once it grows up through the chicken wire, um, you know, it might be a little more difficult or maybe you could fence it off and put some chicken wire over the top, but give that a try, give that a try and let us know how it goes there. Okay, let's see, um, garlic is in from Cecil. That's wonderful. If you're a couple weeks out from your frost date, it's a really good time to plant garlic. Okay, the indoor outdoor gardener. I have some of your seed collections growing in my arrow garden. Okay, that's great. Um, I believe the arrow gardens are a little mini indoor growing system, if I'm not mistaken. So let me know what you have growing in there. That's a really fun way to grow. It has a little built in grow light, I believe. Um, the lettuce seed collection is a great one to grab for this. Five different varieties, and again, they're on sale today for 15% off. So if you're looking for some seeds, these have some really beautiful varieties um, in there. The red romaine, the price head is super pretty. The Paris cause is heat tolerant, and there's a couple others in there, um, but you can check those out on my website, calikimgardenhome.com. Okay, let's see here. A question from Piano Master. I can't get my lettuce to germinate. Any recommendations? Okay, Piano Master, have you tried just um, pushing it into the soil and not covering it um, because it does need light to germinate. So give that a go. Um, it could also be your seeds might, getting might be getting too warm. I don't remember where you're from, but um, if you have them in direct sun and the temperatures are over 75, they are gonna struggle germinating. So try those two things and then come back and let me know how it goes. Okay, I see a question flying by a couple times from Travis. I'm gonna try and answer all the questions I can, guys. So, so please uh, be patient with me here as we're scrolling through the questions. The chat flies by so fast. Travis is asking, how do you stop powdery mildew on pumpkins? Okay, powdery mildew can be a very difficult thing to control. However, um, it's pretty much the same for keeping it under control on pumpkins, on zucchini, on cucumbers, the first thing you wanna do is cut off any leaves that have even one single little spot of powdery mildew. So check your plants daily. It spreads very, very quickly. And you're gonna to wanna to go back and watch my video I did, I don't know, maybe six weeks or so ago on powdery mildew. And I like to use a milk water spray to help keep it under control. Now, it doesn't cure it, because powdery mildew eventually comes into the garden at some point or another in my experience, but it does help keep it under control. And most people have milk in your refrigerator. So go back and watch that video and you can combine the milk and water spray in direct sunlight and it really, really does help. But you wanna spray it before the problem gets out of hand and make sure you keep your plants well pruned, okay? So give that a go, Piano Master, and please let me know, okay, how it goes. All right, um, let's see here. Any suggestions? This is from Laura. We'll take one more question, then we'll go back and talk about our third crop. Okay, this is from Laura. Any suggestions for little gnat-like bugs that are hanging inside my greenhouse? Okay, those are probably some type of fungus gnats or white flies of some kind. And there's a couple different things you can try for that. Um, again, prevention is always the best way to go about it. Sometimes it's really hard to get rid of them when there's already an infestation. But what you may wanna try is um, a couple different things. Little caps or small containers of apple cider vinegar with a little bit of dish soap in it does really help. They're attracted to that. Then they get in there and they can't get out. Um, you also might wanna try sprinkling cinnamon on top of your, um, your plants. 
Um, fungus gnats do like to feed on the organic material and cinnamon does sometimes help uh, stop them in their tracks. Um, the other thing you can do is make sure that you spray your plants with neem oil to help keep them off your plants. So hopefully if you try some of those preventative measures before you have a problem, it will help the problem before it starts. So let me know how it goes there. Okay, Laura? All right, uh, let's see here. My last crop we're gonna talk about and then we'll have some time left for questions. And I know a lot of you have grown these and one of my favorite things to grow during the cool months is microgreens. I love growing microgreens. They're so easy to grow and they're so fun. In case you're not familiar with microgreens, they're little teeny tiny greens. They, you, don't, you don't grow them to full maturity. And the fun thing is, you can use a lot of seeds that you probably already have on hand. So here I, I sow these in this fun little um, trick or treat container. I picked these up at Target last year. So I'm using these for the second year in a row. And usually you can get a couple of them for a dollar at Target or the dollar store. You can use things that you have around the house like little teacups, little glass containers, little foil pans. The great thing about microgreens is you don't necessarily have to have a container with holes because you're harvesting them very young. I prefer to use containers with holes because it will soak up the water from the bottom and they just seem to grow better. But if you want to use a glass container or a teacup, go for it. The sky's the limit on these. And let me just pause here because I saw that we just got a super chat from Sylvia McGinty. Sylvia, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining us. And Camera Guy and I really appreciate the $2 super chat. So thank you very much. So um, here this morning, I sowed, I think it was arugula and can't remember, something else in here. And what you do when you're, when you're sowing microgreens is you notice that the seeds are sown very thickly because you want a nice dense blanket of greens that you can just snip off, throw in your omelet, throw in your salad. And I'm answering your question right here, Ivana. Um, a lot of times I make myself an omelet for breakfast and I snip these and throw them in there and they're a power packed, nutrient flavorful little green. You will not believe how packed with a flavor little microgreens are. So usually I will cover them, the seeds lightly with soil. I didn't hear because I want to show you guys how thickly I sow them. However, I do have a video on microgreens and that's gonna be in the video description. I also have a video on how to grow lettuce indoors, microgreens indoors, and the one on basil. So you wanna check the video description for more detailed information on how to grow those three crops inside. And um, I did also pop some seeds in just this little kind of nursery type container that you might have already grown your seedlings in in the spring. Um, these grow very, very well on a windowsill, don't need direct sunlight. They are gonna germinate in just a couple of days and you'll be harvesting them within about a week, believe it or not. So that's one reason why they are a perfect little cold weather crop, winter crop to grow on your windowsill because it does kind of give you that feeling of bringing your garden inside. You're gonna look outside, you're gonna see the cold weather, the rain, the snow, whatever it is in your area. Um, and you're gonna have something green growing on your windowsill. So there's all types of different seeds you can use for this. Um, you can use arugula, you can use broccoli, you can use chard. Someone mentioned using pea seeds, you can use sunflower seeds, um, all types of different things. If you need seeds, of course, I'd like to try and make it as easy as possible for you guys to get growing. So I do have a microgreen seed collection and this is packed with nine different types of micro of seeds that you can use for growing microgreens. A lot of the ones I just mentioned. Um, and again, 15% off last day of the sale today. So pick one up and believe me guys, in about a month or two months, wherever you live, wherever it happens to be getting cold, you're gonna be glad that you have some seeds to plant some microgreens and lettuce. So um, Yi Vita is saying the pea shoots are the best. Yes, they are, they're power packed, um, they come up. Uh, just beautifully, they look beautiful, and they're super, super flavorful. So let me know there in the chat if you are growing microgreens, and also let me know what fun little containers you like to grow them in. And again, I'm gonna be posting on Instagram in a couple of days when my microgreens germinate. So make sure you follow me at CaliKim29 on Instagram for daily updates, what I'm doing in the garden. I share all kinds of things on my stories, um, when I'm pruning, what I'm harvesting, maybe what I'm cooking for dinner. Um, 
Um, so that's a really a lot of fun. So make sure you follow me over there if you haven't already. And don't forget to follow Callie Camera Guy or Camera Guy, my husband, on Instagram too, because he posts some great behind the scenes photos. He's a great photographer. So make sure you check him out on Instagram as well. Okay, so anybody growing micros greens here? All right, I see uh, Sandra has a question. Is the fall seed collection full of seeds that are frost tolerant? Yes, they absolutely are. Most cool weather vegetables are frost tolerant. And I did try and pack that collection full of frost tolerant varieties so that for those of you who get those early frosts, um, some northern gardeners or midwest gardeners um, you can start your seeds right now but you definitely don't want to delay if you have frost coming and when you get those early light frosts as long as your seeds are established or your plants are established and growing most likely they're going to survive those light frosts in fact some of those cool weather vegetables even get sweeter with frost like kale um, broccoli and cauliflower do great with frost. Collard greens do wonderfully. All the root vegetables like the beets, the carrots, um, the radishes do very well in the frost because they're protected under the soil. So, um, and, and what you can do too is protect your garden bed with like a little plastic winter cover that's very easy to pop up with like a couple of stakes and a, and a piece of thick heavy plastic. So get your fall garden going as well if you haven't yet. And by the way guys, I forgot to mention, um, we posted a video on Saturday. Uh, I didn't get my fall garden planted this weekend because it was too, way too hot, but I was really um, you know, debating on where to plant and I posted a video asking for your help. I had three different options. I got such great feedback. So thank you so much for, for posting your feedback on that video. And if you haven't yet, please go watch it because I am gonna be looking at all the feedback tomorrow and then deciding based on your suggestions, um, oops, based on your suggestions where to plant. I just got to alert that my hotspot battery is low even though I charged it, so go figure. So hopefully we'll get through the stream here <laughs> before it runs out. So um, anyway, make sure you go back and watch that video and comment because I would love to hear your suggestion. Okay, Nisha, question, Kim, how to keep the strawberry alive with sunlight in the winter time? I'm worried they might die without sunlight. Okay, I'm thinking you mean without sunlight. The great thing about strawberries is that they are super, super hardy. And Nisha, I know in Northern California, you're not gonna get weather that's cold enough to kill them off up there. Um, they will stay alive. They might look like they die. They will probably go dormant. You can trim them back. And then uh, I don't know if there's anywhere at all you can place them that you might get a little bit of sunlight, but if not, um, they will bounce back again. Uh, once the weather warms up. So what I would do, I think you grow right, right outside your garage, if I recall. You might wanna cover them up with like a frost blanket of some kind, or even if you can, just pull them into your garage. And then once you're getting sunlight again, you can, you can pull them back outside. But for the most part, they should survive just fine. Okay, um, how do you know when it's time to pull pepper plants? Okay, Sandra. Uh, you may want to go back and watch our video we posted maybe a month or so ago on pulling a plant out at the end of the season. We pulled out our Scarlet Runners and the same, pretty much the same goes for peppers, although peppers can overwinter in a lot of climates if you mulch the, um, the stems very heavily or if you dig them up place them in a container and put them up against a wall where they get more production or more protection. But a lot of times kind of my general rule of thumb is take a look at how your plant looks. If it's getting disease, um, if it's just not looking healthy, it might be time to pull it out. Uh, also take a look at how it's producing. If it's not producing very well and you need the space for another vegetable that will produce more for you, then it's probably time to pull it out. So it's kind of a a toss up, you know, kind of something that you sort of have to gauge depending on the space you have in your garden. If you have enough space, uh, you don't need the space, I would just leave it in until it's killed off by frost. So it really depends, but go back and watch that video on when to pull a plant out at the end of the season and it'll help give you some general guidelines to go from. Okay, let's see here. Um, please do go back. I know um, 
Christy's po posting uh, in the chat uh, to check out our playlist, definitely. If you're looking for a video on a specific topic, most likely we do have a video, we have over 800 videos, so most likely we have a video on the topic you're looking for. So just go and search our channel, pop whatever you're looking for in the search um, field there, and hopefully it will pull some up and then there'll be a playlist. I've tried to organize them to make it easy for you. I do have an indoor gardening playlist that you can watch to get more details on how to plant the three things we talked about today the basil, the lettuce, and then our little microgreens. So it's always helpful to go back and watch for more details. And then if you have a specific question, you can always email me and I can get back to you. Um, sometimes it may might take me a few days or a week to get back to you, but I do try and get back to uh, my emails there. Okay, yes, Cheryl, snow is a problem when trying to grow nutritious food. It can be a problem, um, but I know there are a lot of people who grow even in the snow. And there's a, a lady, you guys might've heard of her. She, her name is Nikki Jabor, and she's on Facebook. I'm not sure if she's on YouTube, but I know she's on Instagram, and she lives in Canada. She's written several books. She's a best-selling author, and I know she grows a lot in cold frames all winter long. Nikki Jabor, I think it's J. A-B-B-O-R, so go and check her out for some ideas. Okay, Dan, Kim, what is your first frost date? We don't always get frost here, Dan. I think officially it's sometime in December. Last year we did have uh, two or three nights, maybe three or four nights where it dipped down below freezing. We even had some nights in the 20s, but we've also had several years where we don't have frost. So typically, um, I can get a lot, some, like maybe one or two tomato plants will overwinter. A lot of my peppers overwinter. A lot of the cold weather vegetables grow without a problem. My biggest problem is I don't have a lot of sun in the winter time because of the angle of the sun drops lower in the sky and the house um, shades out the garden. So um, I mentioned that on Saturday's video, but you guys can see here where I grow a lot of my vegetables on this hill. That is mostly shaded. Um, it might might get an hour of sun a day, maybe, in the short you know days of winter time. So pretty much I grow um, along the fence line here, right behind me, and that's even pretty much all shaded by about one o'clock during the short shortest days of the year. So that's really my biggest issue I have to deal with in the winter time. Okay, but you know what? We find a way around it. Um, there's usually a solution. I just might not be able to grow as much, but we grow some indoors and we grow as much as we can in the, in the sunlight that we have. Okay, we'll take a couple more questions before we sign off. Yeah, Mac was over there um, kind of running around here. Okay, I bet that, yeah, Sandra, I bet you are getting some beautiful fall color right now. That must be so fun. We don't get a lot of fall color here. And growing up in Colorado, we had a lot of it and I really do miss it uh, in the fall. Okay, our Dutch frost date is somewhere in October from Freak on the Way. Wow, thanks so much for joining us from Holland. Yeah, a lot of you guys who are getting frost in another month or so, you're definitely going to want to start these indoor um, veggies now because I know, I'm sure a lot of you just get kind of stir crazy like I've got to be growing something and it really does help you scratch that garden itch in the winter time um, to grow yourself some lettuce or microgreens or something or some herbs. There's lots of other herbs you can grow too indoors. Um, lots of other herbs root like um, mint is very easy to root. Uh, rosemary is a little more difficult to root, but you definitely can do that and grow that on your windowsill. So even if you just have yourself a little herb garden, um, you know, that's always just so fun to add those fresh herbs to your food and just add that flavor. So let's take one more question before we sign off the, for the day. Um, yes, camera guy, his husband is, or his husband, his family, camera guy, my husband, his family is from Holland. So um, that's pretty cool. All right here, ecocentric homestead growing cabbage this year in a bed that gets zero direct sunlight. So that will be a really fun experiment to see how that goes there. Okay, let's see here. Any tips on growing rosemary? Okay, Lily, I actually do have a video on how to root rosemary. Um, rosemary likes it dry. It doesn't like a ton of water. And I just trimmed back a huge rosemary bush over the weekend. I'll be posting about that on Instagram. Um, but it can grow quite large. It likes sunlight. Um, and once it gets established, it really doesn't like a lot of water. It's pretty easy to grow once you get it established. So um, hopefully that will help. But get some going on your windowsill for the wintertime. 
Okay, this is from Charles. Should I cut off the top of my tomato plants from Sacramento? Okay, Charles, it really kind of depends on how your tomatoes are doing there. If they're looking a little bit ratty or if they're loaded down with tomatoes and you want to kind of uh, force the ripening before cold weather hits, Although in Sacramento, you should have a lot of warm weather time left. Um, but if you're growing in a cold winter climate and you wanna kind of force the ripening or force the growth to go into the tomatoes, you might want to top off your tomatoes to really send the growth and the energy of the plant into the tomatoes rather than into growing your plants taller. So it really just kind of depends on what you wanna do with your plant. Okay, last question here, guys, before we sign off, let's see. Uh, oh, Sylvia started a strawberry and lettuce tower. That's a great thing to do as the weather gets cooler. I love to do that here in the as the weather cools off here in California too. Okay, I'm looking for one last question. So if you've got one, post it in the chat. Um, someone's asking, Monica, tastiest fig? I've never grown figs, believe it or not. But so many people tell me I need to grow them and I think a container would be a good idea. I've actually been holding off because I don't want extra shade here in the back, but maybe a container would work really well. So if you have a suggestion for Monica, please post it in the chat here. Okay. Let's see here, guys. Looking for one last question. I wanna see here if there's anything else you guys are growing on your windowsill besides the basil lettuce and microgreens. I really want to encourage you to get some growing and grab some seeds, 15% off with the code September. Last day is today. So grab yours now while the supplies are still good. And we'll, I should be posting a midweek or later in the week video. I'm considering doing one on rooting strawberry runners or on pruning mint. So let me know in the comments of this video if you have a preference for that. And I'll take a look through the comments and um, see what the consensus is. Okay guys, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun hanging out with you and we'll see you later on the week, later in the week on a video and on next week's live stream. All right guys, thanks so much. Love you guys, see you later, bye-bye.